Replacing the 30-year-old CF Express test, the force evaluation has been scientifically developed specifically for the Canadian Armed Forces by the Personnel Support Program's Directorate of Fitness. As of the 1st of April 2014, CAF personnel will be required to complete the force evaluation annually as a representation of their ability to perform the Common Military Task Fitness Evaluation, or the CMTFE. However, the force evaluation has not been validated for permanently injured personnel, Therefore, some of these individuals will be required to demonstrate their ability to perform the CMTFE. I was in AMP uh, August 22nd, 1988, when I lost my leg. I've been in AMP almost 25 years this August. When I first get in, um, we had six months to get to the category that I needed, or I was going to be medically released. So uh, I was injured on Canada Day. July 1st in 2010, so it was just a little over two and a half years ago. I have been diagnosed with PTSD and uh, severe depression, but as well as that, I have uh, severe nerve damage to uh, my left leg, my left arm. Even in a linger like me, uh, I've lost my leg in Afghanistan. Still can accomplish that test, uh, you know, with a good sweat. The Canadian Forces Express test that uh, previously existed was a good test for physical fitness, but had certain limitations. And as a matter of fact, the six common tasks are our new fitness centers to represent universality of service, which by nature is, is the CF's obligation to demonstrate that the test that we have, or that they have, is directly linked to demands of the job. So the purpose of today is really not for all of these members to do all the six common tasks or even for them necessarily to succeed. Although for those that have established that goal for themselves, uh, we'll be there to push them through that. Uh, the goal is really for them to realize what their physical abilities are and demonstrate that it is possible for them to achieve this and that they have a whole team of people behind them to help them accomplish that goal. One of the greatest challenges of being an amputee in the military is managing expectations, not just uh, expectations of others but of yourself and understanding that you are going to be an amputee for the rest of your lives and what you do today will affect your long-term health whether it's um, injuries to joints or your, your sound side so we want to make sure that whatever you're doing whether it's in the fitness trials or in being deployable again that you're making sure that you look out for the long term for yourself that's ultimately the, the most important goal. Uh, the test really gives confidence that you can achieve the main goals that you, you need to accomplish as a soldier and a CF. As long as you are decent physically shaped in physical shape, you can actually get through the, the task and you don't complete it. There are six common military tasks that form the new standard, each derived from real operational scenarios. The first scenario is escape to cover and has a time completion requirement of one minute and eight seconds. Members begin with a 10 meter run followed by a 180 degree turnaround and a 7 second pause on one knee. They then run 50 meters on a curved course, at the end of which they encounter 10 meters of low hurdles, under which they must leopard crawl, finishing off with a final 30 meter run to safety. Next is the vehicle extrication scenario. This task is to be performed with no time limit, requiring safe completion only. The task at this point is to pull an unconscious casualty, weighing 86 kilograms, across the simulated bench seat of an incapacitated vehicle and drag it five meters to where assistance arrives to help carry the victim. Therefore, the legs are removed and the upper half of the casualty is carried the final five meters to where it is placed on the truck bed of the rescue vehicle. Next, we move on to the stretcher carry scenario, where again there is no time limit imposed, merely safe completion of the task at hand. Because there are two people required to carry a stretcher, the member starts by carrying a 43 kilogram simulated victim, representing his or her share of the load 25 meters to a location where there is a 180 degree turnaround, followed by a 15 second rest, then a return trip of 25 meters to a simulated rescue truck. Since four people lift a stretcher, the 43 kilogram half weight is exchanged for half that amount again, and the member lifts his or her share of the victim to the truck bed of the rescue vehicle. The two-part picking and digging scenario is next, where a time standard of 18 minutes per component is imposed. 
First, the member performs the picking segment by forcibly moving the weighted portion of the picking simulator a total of 4 meters, using 30 seconds of picking, then 60 seconds of rest. Once the 4 meters movement has been achieved, the member moves on to the digging segment, during which there is 60 seconds of digging and 30 seconds of rest, until the dig box has been emptied of gravel. Next comes the picket and wire carry task. The member must complete the 23 trips in 17 minutes and 30 seconds. While carrying each piece of equipment approximately 25 to 35 meters to a designated drop line, the member must walk and cannot switch carrying hands. However, running is permitted when the member is empty-handed. Finally, the last test is the sandbag fortification scenario. The maximum time allowed for this segment is 15 minutes, equating to one bag of sand transferred every 15 seconds. Here the member must lift 60 20 kilogram bags of sand, one at a time, from a full pallet and transfer each bag to a platform simulating the average elbow height of CAF personnel. We've really come a long way in how we treat our soldiers and uh, the health respects and quality of life. And then you're, you finally walk away saying, hey, I, I just did something that I never thought I could do. So great opportunity.